What is up, lovely people? My name is Rue, and we are going to be watching Honkai Star Rail version 1.1 special program. So I tried watching the actual live stream, um, the English program, but unfortunately that got delayed and um, it did get rescheduled to later in the day for me. But unfortunately, I was not able to watch it because I got home um, really late. Um, but I still want to see what the special program is all about. So I'm basically going to watch the, um, the recording of the special program. So um, I hope you still enjoy. Okay. So let's see what I missed. Ooh. In the last few days, our team has received some incredible intel from an anonymous source. A I like the animation. A burst has occurred aboard the Sienjo La Fu. Today, we're lucky to have with us in the studio the La Fu Skyfaring Hellmaster Madam Yukong, as well as Mr. La Cha, a traveling merchant currently staying on the ship. I like the voice of the owl. What's the latest on the Lafu situation? Well, for the most part, the Stellaron crisis has been brought under control. We've evacuated affected areas, and life has returned to normal in the safe zones. Hmm. I see. Mr. Lacha, I hear you experienced the crisis Lacha? firsthand. What was it like on the ground? Well, I was trapped in the Lafu's Cloudford Harbor at first. It was only thanks mm. to the Cloud Knights and a fortuitous encounter with kindly strangers that I was able to escape unharmed. That's the Sienjo Alliance. I knew you guys had everything under control. <clears throat> I should mention that over the course of this crisis, we've witnessed a lot of suspicious activity. We believe the infamous hmm. Stellaron hunters are responsible. We now have two suspects in our custody, Blade and Kafka. Unfortunately, their accomplice is still on the loose. Oh. Uh, Hold on. Um, I just want to point out that I um, am not around this part, so sure, I might get spoiled a bit, but I think I already got spoiled um, through TikTok and all that stuff. But yeah, I'm still going to watch this. Talking about the hacker girl, right? Silver Wolf? I heard she infiltrated the Sienjo systems. I say she leaves behind a calling card. Like this one? Exactly. Just like... <laughs> oh! Your fake ID info is ready. This place is different from the rest of the space station. We're on Genius Society turf. Oh! Alright, let's get going. We have to move quickly. Dang! Not what we're looking for. It's a bait signal. <laughs> Dang the music! Let's go! You can challenge the space station. But challenge me? <laughs> Good luck! Welcome to Bellabog's History and Culture Museum. Ooh. But we're in a bit of a bind. Our exhibit was stolen. Oh. Well, who is this robot? Let me take a look. Hmm, so these are the suspects. <laughs> Whoa, what is that? Ooh. Never let your guard down in front of your enemy. She's pretty. Oh. And now, young man, allow <gasps> me to give you a She's still alive? Hello. Your world has a day night cycle. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. As always, I like this owl. Good buddy Albert. 
Welcome to the Honkai Star Rail version 1.1 Galactic Roaming Special Program. Hello. Hello. Good to be here. <laughs> Today, we've invited three special guests to be with us on the program. Introduce them. Hi, guys. My name's Melissa Fun, and I voice Silver Wolf. Hey, folks. My name's Craig Lee Thomas, and I voice Law Cha. Hi, everyone. Lacha. I'm Don M. Bennett, and I voice Yukong. Pleasure to have you with us. Lovely now, people. Without further ado, let's get straight into Honkai Star Rail version 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, what's new, Craig? Well, judging from the trailer we just saw, it looks like all three areas got some updates. Heard a space station, Bellabog, and the Sienjo Lafu. Ooh, okay. I don't know if you noticed, but Silver Wolf got the first bit of screen time. Mm -hmm. Just saying. <laughs> that is true. Speaking of Silver Wolf. I hear our notorious Stellaron Hunter is planning another visit to Genius Society territory soon. Mm. Let's take a close look at this little troublemaker. Mm, yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's right. If I'm not mistaken, well, I like the little circle thing. Mysterious girl was back at the start of the story. Yeah, that's right. It's hard to keep an air of mystery when you're the first one on the scene, but I think she couldn't have timed it better. <laughs> <laughs> I think you couldn't have timed that better. So, <laughs> what role does Silverwolf have within the Stellaron Hunters? Hmm. <laughs> She's a super hacker, essentially. Lots of technical know-how. If you've got a hack, she's got your back. Ooh, yes, that's well said. Good she is. Yeah. Hacking the surveillance system on her to space station? Not easy. That's how she located the Stellaron. Let's not forget the Sien Joe. She hacked into the Law Fu's systems and guided the Astral Express crew onto the ship. <clears throat> Why does he I sound so familiar? Pretty illegal, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess what we're trying to say is Silver Wolf is capable of breaking through any and all defense systems. That's why she's useful to the Stellaron hunters. That is true. <laughs> Second question. <laughs> What's with all the gaming paraphernalia? Oh, I've been meaning to ask that too. A console here, controller buttons there. It's a vibe. Yeah. <laughs> well, this probably won't come as a surprise to anyone, but she's a gamer. In fact, she sees the universe as a mm. game in itself, and she's playing to win. She actually uses a lot of gamer I do slang like in her. conversation. Not everyone picks up on it, though. <laughs> Got it. So it's fair to say she's uh, kind of a nerd? <laughs> you could say that. A cool she's nerd! She's also not great at socializing. Really? Huh. <laughs> she always struck me as pretty outgoing. Hmm. I agree. I guess she does have a lot of friends. <laughs> Hold up a second. She's a little an thing? outgoing nerd with poor social skills and a lot of friends. <laughs> That's quite the combo. Well, mm -hmm. if you struggle to make friends, why not create your own? Melissa, you're talking about imaginary friends, right? I'm not sure that counts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, let me explain. I'm talking about the AI modules in her weapons. See these little guys on her character artwork? That's friend. There's Devil. This one over here is White Collar. Oh, and this one's Servant. Mm. Oh, they're so cute. They are adorable. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty Wasn't adorable. They're the whole when time. When Silverwolf talks about her team of professionals, she's talking about these guys. Oh, hold on a second. Hmm. Since when did AI become so adorable? <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, we're making it real easy for the machines to take over. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> It's thanks to Silver Wolf's hacking skills that she's been able to forge such a fearsome reputation at such a young age. <laughs> Let's take a look at his strengths. Well, Silver Wolf is a quantum type character following the path of nihility. She can apply different debuffs to enemies to improve her allies' combat superiority. In particular, her skill can inflict a weakness on enemies. The mm. weakness she inflicts matches a random ally's attack type. Which is to say that even if nobody on her team has an attack type which matches an enemy's weakness, Silver Wolf can create a weakness that will correspond to Ooh. an ally's existing strength. Exactly. That's In addition, pretty cool. Every one of Silver Wolf's attacks has a chance of inflicting the enemy with a random bug. 
There are three kinds of bugs, which reduce the enemy's attack, defense, and speed, respectively. Mm. Okay. And outside of combat, Silver Wolf can use her technique to attack an enemy and enter battle. Regardless of enemy weakness, she deals damage to all enemies and reduces their toughness. That's pretty if cool! Silver Wolf breaks an enemy's weakness with her technique, it triggers the quantum weakness break effect, right? Yes, that's right. What else was I going to mention? Uh, oh, she seemed to be a pretty ultimate. good support. Silver Wolf's ultimate has a high chance of reducing the enemy's defense in addition to dealing damage. Mm. Oh, so cool. It's like something out of a rhythm game, right? <laughs> see, that is I'm pretty cool. I'm to see what you mean by the universe being a game to her. Mm-hmm. It doesn't stop there either. Did I mention her ability names? There's system warning, allow changes, Awaiting system response, force quit program. Oh, you get the picture. Yeah. Oh, was there one called a 10 set guarantee? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Or how about single warp miracle? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, not. Her ultimate's called user banned, though. <laughs> oh, I know okay. what that means. Banned out of existence. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I guess the scary needs a scary name. <laughs> well. It's time to move on to the CN Joe's mysterious visitor. Lotcha, the traveling merchant. Ooh. 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 He looks good. <laughs> hmm. Ooh, what is that? Straight off the bat, man knows how to dress. Elegant oh, yeah. Look gentlemanly demeanor but they say he's hiding a secret what do you think he's such a Good he does look like a gentleman villain. the way um, he fights he seems very suspicious what? really yeah. how so well imagine some guy waltzes into your hometown dressed like an aristocrat from another planet but he knows all the local customs you'd be a little taken aback right <laughs> hey i think you're being a little hard on the guy some tourists do their research. Uh huh. Well, don't you think his healing abilities are a little mysterious? They came in pretty handy during the Stellaron crisis. Yeah. I mean, if hmm. I'm a traveler merchant, I'm gonna want some first aid skills under my belt. Exactly. It's a dangerous career. Career, huh? Are you sure that's how he makes a living? We haven't seen him trade a single thing. <laughs> well, I feel like this mm. guy already made his fortune. Maybe traveling merchant is just what super rich tourists like to tell people. <laughs> Jeez, you guys have an answer for everything. <laughs> is this the Lotcha fan club or something? Ooh, yes, let's start one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what about the coven he carries around with him? Nothing out of the ordinary there, right? Nope. Uh, yeah, you got me there. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's suspicious. I'm not so sure. Everyone needs a conversation starter, right? Especially traveling merchants. Think about it. If you walk past this guy, the coffin's gonna draw your attention. Yeah, right? the coffin You'll is kind of sus to me. About it, and before you know it, he sold you a new set of shower curtain rings. <laughs> you know, Ooh. something uh, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> Pretty smart. I see. And if you find uh -huh. people are in need of a few shower curtain rings, I happen upon the finest collection of authentic Sienjo bathroom wear. Beautiful um, stuff. Love prices, too. in the original question here. Uh, Is Lacha a good guy or villain? Uh, I don't think we have enough information. Oh, wow. Uh, Not even they know. Guess all you trailblazers have to make up your own mind. Why don't we take a look at his ability? Ooh, now we're talking. <clears throat> hmm. Lacha is an imaginary type character following the path of abundance. Lacha? For a man with medical knowledge, it's not surprising medical? that he's strong hmm. on protection. He can offer healing too and <laughs> dispel debuffs from his allies. Oh yeah, the, the example, abundance. For Lacha's skill can restore an ally's HP. Hmm. When the HP of any ally falls below a certain percentage, Lacha uses his skill on them without consuming any skill points. This Ooh. effect can be triggered again after a set number of turns. Emergency healing, huh? Interesting. Important for team survival. Sure is. After unlocking a special trace, using Lacha's skill also dispels a debuff from an ally. Hmm. Uh, using Lacha's ultimate, Death Wish dispels one buff from and deals imaginary damage to all enemies. Another in good words, support. If you've got an enemy that's always buffing themselves or debuffing your allies. Lacha has an important role to play. 
Precisely. And here's something else. Mm. Every time Law Cha uses his skill or ultimate, he grants himself one stack of Abyss Flower. Now, when the Abyss Flower reaches a certain number of stacks, Law Cha deploys a field against the enemy, which lasts for a set number of turns. When the field is active, allies recover a set amount of HP whenever they make an attack. Ooh. And that's not all. After unlocking a special trace, attacks against enemies in the field can restore ally HP. Cool, it's like a force field of healing. That During is pretty cool. When Law Cha uses his technique, Mercy of a Fool, his field will be immediately generated at the start of oh. the next battle. Sheesh. Okay. Mr. Law Cha, mysterious An origins and extraordinary skills. A pretty good healer. Oh. Oh, 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 she's pretty. Big tail, though. Oh, uh, there's somebody else here we got to get to. I'm talking about the elegant Scott Farron Hellmaster, Madam Yukong. About time, too. Mm -hmm. Well, from commerce, cargo, passengers, all the way through to the Air Force, the Skyfaring Commission is in charge of all matters relating to flight. This is not Ting Yun, the right? That commission, so the above falls right under her remit. Nice. Mm. Speaking of flight, it seems like star skiffs are the most emblematic means of transportation on the Xianzhou. Yeah, they're a common sight in the Xianzhou skies. Yukon can fly them, right? <laughs> I'd say she's pretty handy with a star skiff. <laughs> When she was young, it was Yukong's flying skills that saw her promoted by the general. That's how she joined the Skyfaring Commission. She soon became an ace among the other pilots. Huh? <laughs> That's not the story I heard. Hmm. <laughs> All right, you got me. Here's the director's cut. Yukong ran six red lights in a row. She was dragged straight in front of the general uh, and... I get the picture. Sometimes rebels get noticed. <laughs> You're only young once. Six red lights, huh? Disclaimer, trailblazers, don't try that at home. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, her rebellious streak might be a thing of the past, but she's still as sharp as ever. Tong, give us the lowdown. Coming right up. Yukong is an imaginary type character following the path of harmony. Her skill hmm. emboldening salvo grants her two stacks of roaring bowstrings. When roaring bowstrings is active, the attack of all allies increases. A you buffer. Okay. All these characters are turn. support. In other words, Yukong's skill can increase allies' attack for two turns. You mm. got it. During exploration, using Yukong's technique increases her movement speed for a set time. It also allows her to obtain two stacks of roaring bowstrings at the start of the next battle. Ooh, Ooh. sounds like a good recipe for shaking off enemy pursuers. <laughs> Using Yukong's basic attack triggers her talent Seven Layers, One Arrow, which deals additional damage and increases the toughness reducing damage hmm. of the current attack. This effect can be triggered again after a set number of turns. Ah. When Yukong okay. unleashes her ultimate, Diving Kestrel, she deals imaginary damage to a single target. If Roaring Bowstrings is active, its effect is enhanced, increasing the crit rate and crit damage of all allies. Her days on the hmm. front lines may be over, but Yukong's skills didn't go anywhere. Maybe one day we'll get to see her take flight once again. Ooh. Ooh. Here's hoping. Man, really spoil for choice of these characters, huh? Still. That sounds like a nice story. What else we've got coming up. In version 1.1, we'll be welcoming two brand new light cones to the warp. First up, incessant rain. <sighs> Ooh. Gun in the rain, huh? That's a mood. <laughs> the silver wolf energy is strong in this one. <laughs> you got that right. That looks so nice. You want to tighter the room? <laughs> so true. <laughs> She's like, I told you, Kafka. I'm gonna tidy it as soon as version 1.1 finishes downloading. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh my gosh. The path Ooh. Of echoes at the coffin. Okay, he looks yeah, hot it there. Looks like a snapshot <laughs> of Lacha. Talking to the coffin? Wow. Like uh, okay. Kind of thorny vines are emerging from beneath the lid. That is creepy. So many questions. So I mysterious. Get a sense of mystery and elegance, but there's also a kind of tenderness and fragility here. 
Don't you think? Well, one thing's for sure. If people weren't curious about La Cha's coffin yet, they are now. Mm -hmm. Just a man in his ornately decorated vine-producing coffin. <laughs> Nothing to see here, folks. <laughs> Whatever you say. I'm having theories Check now about the... During the first phase of version 1.1 in the character warp, contract zero. Trailblazers can obtain the limited five-star character Silver Wolf. Ooh. During the same phase in the light cone event, one, phase. the drop rate of the five-star light cone incessant rain will be boosted. Oh, now during the second okay. phase of version 1.1 in the character world. Oh, I don't have, percent. I don't have that four-star too. Limited five-star character Lacha and four-star character Yukon. And they're in the same phase. In the light cone event warp, the drop rate of the five star light cone echoes of the coffin will be boosted. Ooh, 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 I almost forgot to mention. Yeah. When version 1.2 rolls around, Trailblazers can take part in an in game event to obtain the four star character Yukong for free. Oh! Details for this event will be announced through official channels in the not too distant future. Nice. Ooh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Let's take a break for a minute here, but uh, when we get back, we'll be talking version 1.1 of it. Welcome back, Trailblazers. New characters and light cones aside, version 1.1 has lots of events and gameplay updates. And a little bird told me there's an event connected to Silver Wolf on the way. <laughs> I heard the same thing. At the start of the story, Kafka and Silver Wolf invaded Herta Space Station. Kafka's mission was to awaken the Trailblazer. Silver Wolf's mission was to help oh. Kafka infiltrate the space station systems and locate the hidden Stella. I knew they were but the one who did it. Enough for Silver Wolf. Mm, I can believe that. She's been on the IPC's oh. world list for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. During the invasion, she left behind some kind of digital graffiti. Just her way of letting everyone know Silver Wolf was here. <laughs> way to rub it in their faces, Silver Wolf. Really? Still, artists need I need to, to see this. I need <laughs> to see this like um, Silver Wolf energy to before me. the update. Oh, I forgot if to it's tell there. you guys the name of her home world. Punk Lord. Kind of fitting, don't you think? <laughs> what? Seriously? <laughs> no way. Who? Afraid so. I think she was destined for this kind of behavior. Wait, what anyway, did she say? In the Star Trek Lord? game what? event, oh, the gosh. Trailblazers receive an invite oh. from the Space Station's network security engineer, Leonard. They have to help Leonard locate the digital graffiti hidden across the station and uncover the secrets inside. Ooh. Wait, there are secrets hidden inside the graffiti? But if it's all digital... Oh, I bet you need to hack into it or something. <laughs> you might be right. We also mm. get to meet a new Genius Society member. Ooh. One of Madame Herta's collaborators, Screwlum. He'll be helping Screw the Trailblazers them? too. Boy, haven't we seen Screwlum before somewhere? I Battle think we path? saw a hologram portrait of him in Herta's office. He's okay. a robot, right? I thought, robot I thought that was C-3PO. Interesting. I bet he's got a few hacker skills up his sleeve. He looks cool. If he's helping us out too, I'm sure we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I found out? Silver Wolf and Screwlum actually faced off against each other once. You can see a snapshot of their fight in the We Will Meet Again light cone. Whoa. <laughs> okay, Screwlum looking kind of handsome there. Jeez, his portrait really doesn't do him justice. <clears throat> okay. You know, uh, <laughs> if you and the light cone need a moment here, you know, the rest of us can head out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I guess this event will be the second time Screwlum's come up against Silver Wolf's mischief then. Old enemies locking horns once again. That's Ooh, cool. This does kind of feel like a rematch. I gotta mention that graffiti again. Ooh. Anyone else feel like it made for a good tattoo? I feel like some of these characters could pull it yeah. off. Yeah. I don't think that feature is coming to Star Rail anytime soon. Oh, what? But <laughs> I did hear that the designs are collectible. The Trailblazer Ooh. can apply them to in-game surfaces and take photos with the artwork. Oh, oh yes! Collecting the graffiti designs that also allows cool. you to unlock Ooh. the limited four-star light cone before the tutorial mission starts. Complete the event mission to obtain oh, yeah, I see light, blade, which can be exchanged in the event shop for limited light cone special superimposition material. Okay. As well as stellar jade. Hey, that's another good looking light cone. Uh, uh, not to change the subject or anything, but I gotta ask, yeah. is that Albert merch I'm seeing over there? <gasps> oh. So 
one. Oh, I didn't see the <laughs> other one. <laughs> Uh, it's a pension hit. <laughs> Claw machine. Oh, I introduced you to the Hype BC's merchandise department. If you guys had your own merch, they'd be sold out in no time. <laughs> or maybe let's just get back to version 1.1 for now. In the story thus far, Bellabog has finally emerged from the Stellaron shadow. But there's a lot left to do. The city is going through changes. Any of you guys want to shed some light? I heard a thing or two. Now that the underworld and overworld are reconnected, things are definitely heading in a better direction. I'm not One there yet. Development, <laughs> like Bellabon's I said before. History Museum is getting ready to reopen to the public. Museum? I love museums. Oh, don't you wish you could <laughs> take the exhibits home with you, though? The only um, problem is exhibits are being stolen. Oh. Anything you'd like to tell us, Melissa? <laughs> oh, oh. Wait a minute. I just found out they had a museum. How could it have been me? Oh, I didn't say it was you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Prime suspect. Anyway, in the Everwinter City Museum Ledger of Curiosities event, the Trailblazer must help Pala track down clues and recover the lost exhibits. Ooh, this seems fun. Good who done it? Sounds great. Well, that's not all. The Trailblazer can take on managerial responsibilities and help run the place. Okay, um, what? So what does that involve exactly? I'm glad you asked. The Trailblazer can do things like collect exhibits and enlist other individuals to improve the overall experience for visitors. After hmm. achieving specific operational goals, they can accumulate funds to expand the museum's exhibits and gradually unlock limited time rewards, such as stellar jade, lost crystals, and self-modeling resin. Mm, Interesting. Sounds like fun. I'm sure it'll be a piece of cake. When the limited time event is over, the museum will remain as a mode within the game. Trailblazers can return to the museum at any time to check out the collection and catch up with colleagues. Okay. Of course, if you encounter any issues during the running of the museum, please don't hesitate to get in touch with the IPC. Wait, we can have the service. <laughs> what? I get ahead of myself. <laughs> A deep breath, Albert. Not everything is an IPC sales pitch. <laughs> Thanks, Dot. This is what happens if you read commercials for a living. <laughs> Nah. Kind of did sound like a useful service. Maybe the IPC should look into it. <laughs> I'm nah. sure our trailblazers are more interested in the content of the new version. Uh, let's get back on track. Nah. All right. A researcher from the space station found a combat simulation program of unknown origin called Stellar Flare, which contains hmm. a series of new challenge stages. Huh? More challenges? Every stage in Stellar Flare has a challenge theme and corresponding special mechanism. Trailblazers will have to think outside the box and use any advantages offered by the mechanisms to complete the stage in as few turns as possible. <clears throat> Sounds okay. Like a forgotten hall to me. Uh, the yeah. difference with Stellar Flare is that the special mechanisms might require completely new ways of thinking about combat. For example, in some stages, using your skill doesn't consume skill points. In others, damage dealt when breaking an enemy's toughness is increased, but the enemy's hmm. toughness will be immediately restored. Huh, sounds pretty cool, but I'm sure Silver Wolf will take care of it in one turn. Uh, uh, what if I haven't leveled up enough characters? Is it impossible for me to complete the challenge? Don't worry. To assist Trailblazers in completing the challenge, Every Stellar Flare stage has a trial character suited to the theme. Mm. You don't say. Oh. I can get behind that. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Garden of Plenty event. Recently, the cosmos has entered a turbulent cycle, and the calyxes are unusually active. The reality Ooh. data contained within them has Double? grown exponentially. Huh, which means... <laughs> it means that over a fixed time period, Trailblazers have a set number of daily attempts to obtain double the rewards from Calyxes. Okay. Up, here we come. The next event we're going to talk about is called Lab Assistance in Position. Gundam. Wen Shuling is a Department of Implement Arts researcher on Herta Space Station, and she's currently preparing research topics needed for the next quarter. However, the Antimatter Legion's invasion. Is <laughs> I like fun. Silver Wolf being all really? like bone. As a result, Wen Shuling has asked the Trailblazer to help her collect monster materials for use in her research topic. A... If the Trailblazer collects and submits the experimental materials required on a given day, they can receive corresponding rewards. I got a question, Dawn. Fire away. These mm. are Space Station and Bellabog events, right? 
Aren't there any events or missions on the Sienjo Lofu? <laughs> you beat me to it. Oh. <laughs> That's exactly what I was about to bring up. In version 1.1, three new companion missions are destined for the Sienjo Lofu. Oh. These missions will involve Bailu, Yin Ching, and Lo Cha. Uh. As for the specifics, I'm gonna keep that a secret for now. We can't go spoiling all the fun, can we? What? Ugh, not even one detail? <laughs> Come on, Dai. Can you give us a little something? We're on the edge of our seats here. No. Yeah, come on, Don. Uh, all right. Maybe, all right. I guess. Do you guys remember the girl with the blindfold in the opening trailer? And now, young man, allow me to give you a dignified end. <gasps> I was wondering who she was. Well, all I'll say is that she and the Sienjo have a complicated past. And her appearance on the Sienjo leads to a dramatic encounter with Cloud Knight Lieutenant Yin Ching. And that's all oh. you're getting. Sorry! <laughs> oh, oh I know! Oh, kind of, maybe. maybe. Oh, come on. I have an idea. <laughs> no, I'm not, afraid not that's I all know. you're getting. However, I do have a little info on some other updates. Interested? <laughs> Uh, sure, I guess. Mm. Well, if nobody's that interested, then I'm I was. Of course, we're interested. <laughs> what, are you crazy, Albert? You're interested, right? Mm. <laughs> mm, that's better, good boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Melissa! The check-in event gift of Odyssey <gasps> will also be arriving in Ooh. version one point one. For the length of Let's this version, go. as long as Trailblazers log in for seven days, they can acquire ten Star Rail special passes. Ten I want this. Warps? Nice. Version 1.1 will also see some system updates. When Trailblazers need to obtain leveling materials that only a certain type of enemy can produce, they can instantly teleport to an area where the enemy is present, oh. as well as pinpoint the precise location of the enemy on the map with a marker. Sounds like a real time saver. Oh, Once yeah. You hear this. Once the enemy in question is defeated, the marker will automatically move to the location of the next enemy. Oh, just like Genshin, all basically. Once enemies on a map have been defeated, Trailblazers can continue to pinpoint enemies on other maps. This process can be repeated until all daily respawned enemies of a certain type have been defeated. Mm, well, that's a okay, saver. it I is. I found my way to the studio today. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a small combat surprise in store. During combat, trotters that have lost their way may randomly enter battle. As long as the trotter is defeated before it manages to flee, additional leveling materials can be obtained. Oh. Enemy geolocation and additional material opportunities. Devs, I owe you one. <laughs> Last but not least, in order to help trailblazers stay in touch, version 1.1 also has a friend chat function. <gasps> so Ooh. you mean, aside from helping friends through support assist, Let's we go. can send them messages too? Mm-hmm, you got it. Doesn't matter if they're old companions or new acquaintances. That's the spirit of trailblazing right there. Oh, hey, Albert, what's mm. your account? Let me add you. Uh, what? I need mm. to add you. <laughs> you can be my personal IPC customer service. What do you think? Hello. <laughs> Hey, don't get any ideas because I nearly made up a service that doesn't exist. Oh. Mm. So you don't oh. want to add me? Guess I'll just have to hack you. <laughs> well. <Wait a minute. laughs> we can negotiate. Yeah, I'm going to need those account details too. Count me in. Sorry yeah. to jump on the bandwagon here, Albert, but you're a celebrity anchor for the IPC. Everyone wants to be your friend. <sighs> Fine, but I'm switching my account the next chance I get. Yeah. <laughs> Time for today's third redemption code. <clears throat> oh. Ah, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Looks like our special program is coming to an end. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but as the first guest on the program, you guys got any thoughts, reflections, complaints? Oh, it's been an honor to be on the show, Albert. I gotta say, we covered a lot of ground. Now I'm even more excited for the updates. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed I get silver wall. <laughs> yeah, seriously, same. Greg, how you feeling? I feel like I've got more questions than I came in with. What new directions will Lacha take the story in? Who's stealing exhibits from the museum? And what about those companion missions? <sighs> Guess we'll have to find out the answers in game. Mm, yeah. <laughs> for real. <laughs> As for me, well, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'd seen a lot of Yukong up to now, but this was the first time I got to understand her moves and role on the battlefield. 
Hmm. She's so cool. I kind of want to be her. Then again, I guess I kind of am her. <laughs> <laughs> I had to double check that for a second, huh? <laughs> well, that's it for the Honkai Star Rail version 1.1 special program. Yay! I want to thank all you Trailblazers today for tuning in, and hey, we'll see you on the flip side. <laughs> see you in the game. Bye. Bye. See you I see ya. Bye. Later, guys. Bye. <laughs> cool. What? You didn't think it was over, did you? What? Hello? That was pretty cool. <laughs> I like that ending. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it seems like some interesting stuff is gonna happen. Um, um, in the next update, um, I have no idea if I want to, um, uh, make a pull for Silver Wolf or, um, Lotra, Lo Lotra, <laughs> I now I forgot the pronunciation again, um, but seems like it's just interesting stuff, um, new stuff basically for the next update, um, and I'm just basically... I'm just basically excited that um, the game is just going to improve from here on out. And it legit just came out. So um, I'm excited. I am I am pretty excited. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and um, I'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy.